Greetings once again, adventurers. Dudes, dudes, din. Back again. And this is it. We've taken our step into Universe Zero, the only timeline where Mother seems to survive all the way through. But why? And our heroes also have to be careful, as there's no do-overs in this universe. There's no traveling to a different timeline. This is it. Everything they do here is set in stone, and any changes that happen here become fixed. What will change? What will stay the same? Who will survive and who will be lost to time itself? And how will they deal with the Eden's One and its evil machination? Join me as I find out, won't you? Alright, wow. See, I just started watching the Eden Zero anime not too long ago. And it's interesting to see the Aqua Wing again. Chapter 221. Back in the sky where cherry blossoms dance. You have Happy looking out the window saying, Look, Rebecca, there's a weird planet over there. Rebecca pays it no mind, saying, But we're filming on a different planet today. Happy holds up his phone, saying, This says it's a rundown old theme park, Grand Bell. Huh. So they, I thought they came planning to go to Grand Bell. But did they do it initially on a whim? Huh. Rebecca looks disinterested, saying, Rundown theme park? Ew, no thanks. But as she pulls on the controls, she says, Still, it feels like the ship is resisting my direction. Is it being pulled to that planet? No, that's silly. No, Rebecca, that's destiny. Huh, we pick up in the planet Granbell. The robots here seem okay. Not like they're about to break down or anything. We see Shiki doing his repair work oh he's working on michael oh wow yeah he's working on a compartment in michael's chest he closes it up saying okay now to connect you to the repair system and there so he knows about the repair system in this timeline huh she seems a lot more diligent too and as he boots michael back on he says, all better. Michael puts on his hat saying, thanks as always, Cheeky. Cheeky says, don't mention it, Michael. We're friends. Next on today's schedule is fixing the cat in the forest. Okay, that's how we were introduced to him. Michael says, a cat, huh? It's supposed to be a quest monster. Cheeky says, without any guests, there ain't no friggin' quest. Then we have that cat monster in the forest meowing up a storm, stomping around. Cheeky greets it saying, yo, how have you been? Alright, not good. Sorry for asking. For this guy, I open the hatch on its head. Shiki leaps up towards the cat's head, landing on it. He then says to get to the maintenance. Huh. But suddenly a weird force comes over Shiki and the cat. As Shiki says, what the? The cat lets out a meow. As Shiki questions, why do I feel so heavy? My gravity ether gear is out of control. Huh. It's like I'm being pulled to something. He says as Rebecca and Happy near the cat. Oh, it's weird to see these events from Shiki's perspective. And just like their first meeting before, the mechanized cat monster's head slams into the ground, scaring Rebecca and Happy. Rebecca screams, Kitty? As Happy is sent tumbling away. And as the cat's head is buried into the earth, Shiki finds himself breathing heavily, obviously taken off guard by what happened. Rebecca is speechless, but then... I guess realizes that her legs are like wide open and she's wearing a skirt. She closes her legs and says, a, a person? Shiki gives her this intense stare and Rebecca immediately starts crying and freaking out saying, Eek, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Shiki questions, human? And then he rushes over to Rebecca asking, are you human? Obviously freaking Rebecca out. He then starts squeezing her face saying, ooh. Rebecca says, just a... Then he starts pulling out her mouth as she goes, whoa. Rebecca tries to say, don't. And then he starts groping her boobs. And Shiki says, you're so soft. And of course, Rebecca freaks out and promptly smacks him. She questions, what is wrong with him? But wait, I thought there weren't supposed to be any humans here. Happy says, he doesn't look like a guest either. Shiki starts to get up saying, hmm, there aren't any other humans, just me. He says as he's looking directly up Rebecca's skirt. <laughs> Rebecca stomps him in the face saying, stop staring at my panties, jerk. And as Rebecca retreats in embarrassment, Shiki says, so you're one of those... Women, a human woman, and a cat. Shiki then grabs Happy, saying, A cat? Ugh, can I eat it? Happy says, No. And then he goes and hides behind Rebecca's leg, saying, I'm scared. Rebecca questions, What is wrong with him? And as Shiki continues to glare at her, she winces in fear, saying, What? Well, 
What? Kiki continues to glare, and Rebecca questions, What are you so angry about? It's okay, just calm down. That's a good boy. Okay. But as Rebecca flinches as something comes flying at her, it's simply Shiki extending a hand, taking Rebecca and Happy off guard. Shiki meekly asks, Will you be my friend? Happy and Rebecca are speechless. Shiki continues saying, I want to be fr- Oh! Here it is! But before he can finish speaking, suddenly, memories start flowing into them. The entire events of when they first met, the moment when Rebecca and Shiki officially became friends. Oh wow, we even have their time spent adventuring and having weird little moments, their camaraderie, them helping out each other, them being there for each other, and the last moment they had before they came to this universe, this timeline, where Shiki said, I know we'll find each other again. She Shiki then says, Rebecca? And as tears well up in Rebecca's eyes, she says, Shiki. And even Happy starts tearing up as the memories flow in him. And as the two are delighted to see each other once again, they embrace as Shiki cries, saying, We're together again. Rebecca, happy. And Rebecca says, Shiki, we found you. That's why I was drawn to this planet, so I could meet you. Shiki continues to cry, saying, should I say I'm home or welcome back? Rebecca laughs and wipes away her tears saying neither. We still have our memories, but in this world, we've never met before. And Shiki simply asks, then let me ask again, will you be my friend? And Rebecca this time says, yes, I'd love to. That's actually delightfully beautiful. I am, it makes the fact that I have <laughs> literally started on the Eden Zero anime even better because I just saw these events not even that long ago. It didn't get me all weepy, but it's like a nostalgic feeling like, man, yeah. But this now raises the question. They have memories of an entirely different life. What happens now? Do they approach things with the mindset of, oh, we've ex been here, done that, I know exactly how to handle these situations. Like, how do things go down now? I'm curious. I mean, a lot of the friends they gained over time, things went a little bit differently. I mean, do they prevent what happened to Elsie and Justice? Do they keep Madame Kurenai from receiving the fate she receives? Did they save Wit? Does this only take effect when Shigi asks to be friends with them? What is it that triggers the memory? And the big downside here is, when they were aboard the Eden Zero and they, you know, traveled over, Clown was also aboard the Eden Zero when it went to Universe Zero. Does that mean he also is now in the present with knowledge of the future? What does it all mean? Hmm, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Hello. Will we basically be playing this game on been there done that mode, experience mode, it's like new game plus essentially, and they just speed run through everything they went through but with less casualties because they know what to avoid, or do they just go through the motions as not to disrupt the path that they were already set up down, and there's no way it's all smooth sailing from here on out, when will things go wrong, will it be clown? Or has the Edens 1 followed them as well? Let me know your thoughts, but also remember to like, subscribe, bell, all that good YouTube stuff. And until next time, I've been News is Then, and I hope to see you in the next video. Till then, bye bye